Welcome to Textonation. Joining us is Matt Fraser, Business Development Manager for the Lumix line at Panasonic. Thank you for joining us, Matt. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate the Panasonic. Well, Panasonic making waves again with a new full-frame mirrorless camera. This one a little different from what you've had out before, the S5. Tell us about it. Yeah, so when we launched the S-series cameras, um, we really had a focus on professional photographers with the S1 and the S1R and professional cinematographers with the S1H. So they were larger bodies um, designed for um, you know, the ergonomics of a professional photographer where everything's easy to access, very good thermal management. And ultimately, the market was asking us for a smaller, lighter weight body that was more for the aspirational professional or the high level enthusiast. So we've reduced the size of the camera by roughly 30% in weight over the S1. And it's actually so much smaller that it is smaller than really our most popular camera, which is the GH5. It's smaller than the GH5 in every possible dimension. Which is and a micro camera four thirds sensor. camera, we should point out. Yeah, that, that camera uses a sensor that's a quarter of the size of what's in the S5. So you get a substantially larger sensor in a camera that's uh, noticeably smaller. So that, the goal here was really to offer something that has the power for creatives of an S1H and an S1, but in a more compact form factor. But it still retains some pro-type features, dual card slots, uh, weather sealing, et cetera. Tell, tell us about that. Yeah, so the, the camera is still uh, ruggedized, so it is uh, splash and dust resistant. Um, the camera is rated to offer all of its video recording modes in their promised recording times at up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or 40 degrees Celsius, depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, it's important to note that there's a lot of unlimited recording times in the camera, including 4K30P is a completely unlimited recording time in the product. There will be some 30 minute recording limits, uh, mostly around uh, 4K60P or any of the 10 bit 4K functions. But those are really thermal limitations and they're designed to protect the camera up to 104 degrees. So if you're operating at like 90 degrees, the camera is still going to record for a very long period of time. You just press the record button and 30 minutes is over and you'll get another 30 minutes right out of the camera. Really exciting. Tell us about the, the lens selections available for, for the S line. Yeah, so our mount is actually called the L mount. And uh, that's a partnership or an alliance with Sigma and Leica. So any of the lenses in those three systems will, you know, co-work with each other as if they were made by that other manufacturer, which is great for interoperability. Um, in terms of what Panasonic has to offer, at present we offer, we just launched a 20, mil, 20 to 60 millimeter lens that will be available as a kit with the camera. So it's a shockingly wide angle lens for a kit lens. Uh, we offer a 24 to 105. We offer a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. We offer a 70 to 200 f 4. We offer a 70 to 200 f 2.8. We offer a 50 millimeter f 1.4. And then we've just announced four new prime lenses that will be developed. And one of them will be get shipping sometime this, hopefully this year. The rest will be shipping very soon after that. Um, the one that will ship the first will be an 85 millimeter f 1.8. But we've also announced a 24, a 35 and a 50 millimeter prime, and they're all basically the same size. So they're nice and compact lenses. We've also announced that we'll have a 70 to 300 F4.5 to 5.6 lens available very quickly as well. So that's a pretty complete lens assortment. And then when you add in everything that Sigma has recently announced, um, you know, they offer a 24 to 70, they have a 70 to 200, they have a whole slew of prime lenses. Uh, in fact, when we launch the camera uh, and it starts shipping, if you pre-order an S5, to show the alliance to customers and how well integrated it is, people who pre-order S5s will get a free Sigma 45 millimeter um, f2.8 lens. Uh, they have to register with us online, and it's a wall supplies last offer. But we want to make sure people see not just Panasonic lenses, but they see the full line of lenses that are available. So you're open for orders now. When will the camera arrive for shipping? You know, we're hoping to get the camera, I shouldn't say hope, but we, we fully expect to have the cameras out by the end of the, uh, September. Um, sometime, you know, in the 20th-ish range is when we should see shipping. Uh, the pre-orders for that free lens, they start around September the 2nd, and they'll run through September the 30th. So as long as people get the pre-order around that time, 
they should be able to qualify for getting the free lens. Tell us about pricing. So the camera will sell for $19.99 and $0.99 cents, uh, as a body only, or you can get it for $22.99 and $0.99 cents with that 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. And if you hurry up, you can get that add-on lens from Sigma as well, I suppose, right? Yeah, I would. I, it, by the way, it's a great lens. I love it. It's super compact. It's it's built like fine jewelry almost. The way that it's made of the metals that they chose, it really feels like a sharp piece of kit. I think they sell it for about five hundred and fifty dollars at retail. Well, tell us when when you, when you look at the the lineup from Panasonic now and, and what you're offering. I guess um, are you are you thinking you're going to be moving customers away from micro four thirds to this uh, the full frame lineup? I think ultimately consumers make that decision on their own, but our our goal is to have two systems that run parallel to each other. There are clearly advantages that Micro Four Thirds offers that we um, can't presently offer in a full frame. Uh, we can get much smaller optics with a Micro Four Thirds lens. We can get a much smaller overall body with better thermal management in a Micro Four Thirds camera. But the most important thing is that the sensors can be made to read out much faster because the sensor is physically smaller. So working in micro four thirds with cameras like the GH5, people should expect us to use that platform to launch our latest technologies because sometimes we simply can't accomplish our goals with those slower readout speeds that are in a full frame camera. So think of micro four thirds as a proving ground for the future technologies we can eventually add to full frame. And I think that's the smartest way for customers to look at it. We rely on the Micro Four Thirds camera lineup to help hone our craft so that it's when that sensor technology is fully developed in full frame, we can shift those features over. You're doing something interesting with the stabilization here too. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Panasonic does something called dual IS, which we have an in-body stabilization system. We're moving the sensor around in five different axes. This is not unique to our brand. Um, but then you also have the ability to use an in-lens system and they work in tandem with each other. So we're using one gyro sensor and it controls the whole rigor and roll, makes it all work perfectly together. Uh, and this camera gives you six and a half stops of correction for photography, but it also gives you exceptionally good video stabilization. And from everything we're seeing online, even with the latest offerings from some of our competitors, uh, in particular the video stabilization, we still think we're the king of full frame when it comes to video stabilization. Terrific. Tell us uh, about battery life. Sometimes that's a significant issue with the uh, with mirrorless cameras. Yeah, it's, it's understandable, especially if you're coming from a DSLR because you're looking through an optical finder. It doesn't require much electricity to put the little information that's overlaid onto your optical finder. So people are used to very long shooting times. Uh, this camera uses a completely new battery. Um, the GH5 battery has 1900 milliamps. This has 2200 milliamps. And the battery is basically the same size as that GH5 battery uh, with a pretty significant capacity increase. In fact, this battery can be used in a GH5 or GH5S or a G9 if you wanted to. Um, you just can't use a GH5 battery in, in the S5. And so you're getting about 470 SEPA rated photos looking through the viewfinder. And I personally have done testing. I'm getting well over two hours of video recording time out of that battery. That's terrific. So uh, 470 shots uh, on, a, on a charge is what you're, it's what you're expecting here? Yeah, when you look through the electronic viewfinder, and that's the SEPA ratings, they, they tend to be very conservative. Um, you know, it's a very different experience if you're doing time lapse. You know, I think people who do time lapses would they're horrified at the idea of 470 picture. You're going to get way more shots than that for time lapse. It's mostly just the walk around rating for SEPA at 470 images. And one thing that you can do with this, I understand, also is use an external battery using the USB-C port. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we use a technology called USB-C PD. PD stands for power delivery. Um, it's the, the new generation chargers that are being used for things like your iPad or your, your MacBook Pro, high-end laptops. All of them are using this new USB PD interface. And so as long as you're, you have a device that can supply 27 watts, that's uh, 9 volts and 3 amps. 
you can effectively power the camera right from an external solution. I, I use a 10,000 milliamp hour little power block, power brick, like what you use to charge a cell phone. And with that thing, I get six hours of recording time on, <laughs> on an S5. And the best part is you still keep a battery in the chassis of the camera. So that adds additional recording time on top of it. And if you're really nervous about recording time, you can also add a battery grip, which we offer as an accessory. Really terrific. Where's the best place for people to go for more info? Well, I'd go to shop.panasonic.com and then just search for Lumix and you'll be able to see all of our cameras there. Once again, it's the brand new Lumix S5 arriving soon. Matt Fraser, thank you for taking the time with us. Thank you for having me. It was, uh, it was a pleasure talking with you.